Hi, I'm Miss Emma from St. Mary's County Library. Welcome back to Fairy Tale Steam. Today, we're going to talk about compasses and how they work. But first, let's start with another story. There were once two children who lived in a small cottage in the woods with their parents. Their names were Hansel and Gretel. One day, the family decided to go on a picnic. They packed up some food and went for a stroll through the trees until they came to a small clearing. As their parents set up the picnic site, Hansel and Gretel decided to go play in the woods. Don't go too far, their parents warned. We don't want you getting lost. Hansel and Gretel nodded fervently, and they went off to play, making sure to stay close to the campsite. But as they began to play, they forgot their parents' warning. Off in the distance, Hansel saw the best climbing tree. Come on, Gretel, let's go climb that tree, Hansel urged. But what if we get lost, Gretel replied, cautious of their parents' warning. Don't worry, Gretel, I'll mark our path with this. Hansel held out a loaf of bread he had taken from the picnic basket, and as Gretel watched, he began to tear the loaf into smaller crumbs, walking toward the climbing tree, dropping crumbs behind himself to mark his path. Gretel liked this plan and happily chased after him to catch up. Hansel and Gretel continued to play in the woods until they noticed it was starting to get late. Gretel, we should probably head back now, Hansel murmured, looking around for his breadcrumbs. With a rush of relief, he saw a crumb near the base of the tree. To his horror, however, as he watched, a creature approached and ate the crumb right up. As he looked further, there were no crumbs in sight. The kids realized they were lost and became even more worried. Hansel and Gretel started to walk back down the way they thought they had come from, but the woods all looked the same. Soon they were very, very lost. With no food or water, they wandered around the forest all night. As daylight started to peek through the trees, the kids noticed that they were walking towards a very odd-looking house. This house had walls made of gingerbread, a roof made of cake, and windows of candy, and was covered in delicious frosting all around. Hansel and Gretel could not believe what they were seeing. The kids forgot all about how lost they were and began to run towards the house. They reached forward just to grab a piece of gingerbread to satisfy their aching hunger. Just as they were both about to take a bite, they heard a voice. Oh? Now who is nibbling on my house? Ansel and Gretel looked around, and to their surprise, saw a sweet old lady standing on the front stoop. We're sorry, miss. We're just so hungry, they cried. As they began to tell her all about their ordeal, the old lady began to feel very bad for them, and so she let them in. The inside of the house was very different from the outside. There was dirt on the floor, and there was a layer of grime on everything. It was dark and gloomy, and it didn't feel right. But because they were so tired and hungry, they didn't care too much. The old lady brought all sorts of food and desserts for them, and Hansel and Gretel gobbled it all up until they were so full they could hardly keep their eyes open. The old lady quickly ushered them to the softest bed, and soon they were fast asleep. When they woke up in the morning, the old lady was nowhere to be seen. They started to look around. At the end of a long corridor, Hansel and Gretel noticed a door that was partially open. As they approached, they began to hear her singing. Stir once, stir twice, stir thrice. Must make sure the broth is nice. I sure have some sweet meat. I think I'll start with their feet. The old woman cackled as she sat over a large cauldron, stirring it with a large ladle. Understandably terrified, Hansel and Gretel turned towards the door. As they bolted down the corridor, the old lady's singing abruptly stopped, and the door at the end of the corridor slammed open. Where are you going, my little morsels? You haven't had breakfast yet. The kids picked up speed, scrambling at the knob on the front door, swinging the door wide open and sprinting across the front yard, never looking back. As they ran, terrified, screaming through the woods, they crashed into their parents. With joyful sobs, the family reunited, and Hansel and Gretel's parents escorted them home. The old lady and her house in the woods were never seen again. The end. What a happy ending! I, for one, am very glad that Hansel and Gretel were reunited with their parents after getting lost in the woods. 
But you know what they could have used to avoid getting lost? A compass. But what is a compass really? And how does it work? Well, to understand that, we first need to talk about magnets. Every substance is made up of tiny units called atoms. Each atom has electrons depicted here in red, which are particles that carry electric charges. Spinning like tops, the electrons circle the nucleus, or core, of an atom. The core is made up of protons, depicted here in yellow, and neutrons, depicted here in blue. The movement of electrons around the core generates an electric current and causes each electron to act like a microscopic magnet. All magnets have north and south poles. Opposite poles are attracted to each other, while the same poles repel each other. When you rub a piece of iron along a magnet, the north-seeking poles of the atoms in the iron line up in the same direction. The force generated by the aligned atoms creates a magnetic field. The piece of iron has become a magnet. But how does this relate to a compass? Well, the first thing to know is that the needle in a compass is actually a small magnet. The second thing to know is that the Earth is a giant magnet. Earth's magnetic field, also known as the geomagnetic field, is the magnetic field that extends from the Earth's interior out into space. And just like the north-seeking poles of the atoms line up in the same direction when you rub a magnet along a piece of iron, the needle of the compass lines up with a magnetic field of the Earth, showing you which way is north. Now we're going to show you how to make a compass for yourself. To start with, let's take another look at our materials. We have some paper, pins or needles, a magnet, a bowl, and some water. You don't need a lot of water, just enough to float something in. As we mentioned before, any thin metal object should work. Pin, needle, straight paper clip, etc. Now, this magnet is pretty weak, so it will take a couple of minutes to magnetize it. If you're using a pin, be careful not to poke yourself. From the top, it can look like the magnet is being rubbed in both directions, but it's only being rubbed in one direction. If you rub the magnet in both directions, then you won't make very good progress. Just as a heads up, it can be difficult to guess at when the needle is magnetized. Fortunately, you don't need to guess. If you have another needle, pin, or paper clip, then you can test the strength of your first one by trying to lift up the second one, like so. After your needle is sufficiently magnetized, you just need to float it in a bowl of water. That's what the paper is for. Folding the paper can make it a bit easier to keep the needle on top as you try to place them both on the water. As long as you don't accidentally sink the paper and needle, it should start to line up with the Earth's geomagnetic field. And it should happen pretty quickly. If you're not sure that it's working on your own, you can try rotating the needle yourself and see if it rotates back on its own. And that's it! With a little bit of effort, you've made your very own compass, which people have been using for hundreds of years to help them navigate unexplored lands. 
Thanks for following along and we'll see you next time. Bye.